Hello there everybody, this is Graham, also known as the Collector 75. Welcome to another Transformers review. This is of course the Autobot Pretender Beasts. Uh, but before I get onto them, I thought I'd do uh, what I've been buying recently. Uh, most of it is some KO bits, so I was actually thinking of doing a whole video uh, dedicated to all my latest KO stuff. I haven't been buying a lot, but I have bought a few bits. Um, but to be honest, I haven't got enough stuff to do a whole video on that. So I thought I'd just um, add it on to the start. This wouldn't take very long. Uh, right, so we're going to start off with... I did buy the IDW uh, Transformers Regeneration 1, number 81. Um, I really do like it. Uh, and also then I had to go and get <laughs> the incentive cover because, um, sorry, it's at a funny angle. Uh, mainly because it was done by Jeff Senior and I was always a big fan of his. And um, I loved it when I was a kid when I used to read like Target 2006. And I think he did a few other bits of uh, Dinobot Hunt, that Hunt even, when I was a little kid and, and loads of other stuff. Uh, from mainly the UK and then obviously went over to the US. So I had to get him, I was a big fan of his. And he doesn't hardly, as far as I know, he doesn't really do um, any comics work at all these days. So it's nice when he go, does honour his roots and he goes back and does something for Transformers, which I always really do admire from him. Um, I love the other Andrew Wildman cover there. I think that's a great cover with Megatron. Um, the storyline, uh, I thought it was alright actually. It's not too bad. It's a bit strange where it continues 21 years later. Um, but then again, I suppose it's trying to keep up with present day and everything like that, which um, I suppose isn't, you know, fair enough. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to really get onto that. Maybe one day on my comics reviews, when I finish the whole UK run, I'll get onto that. Um, even though it does obviously conflict with the continuity from Generation 2 and stuff like that, but of course it's going to. But it doesn't matter, it's still a great comic and one of the best ones I've read, actually. I, I did lose my way with some of the, a lot of the IDW stuff. Um, I think the infiltration and subsequent few storylines were pretty good. And then once he got down to that dreadful all hail Megatron, I just lost interest big time. Uh, so yeah, so anyway, that was that. Uh, what else have I been buying? I got my crazy Devi. I know this isn't exactly the one. This is the uh, bronzed one, bronzed Predator King sword. Uh, yeah, I did get the gold chromed sword that came through the post the other day, uh, and it came with some other little bits just for the knuckle dusters and everything like that. Um, yeah, so I got that. That's pretty cool. I might actually sell that one. Uh, what else have I forgot? I got from chimmungung.com. I did buy another toy, but my girlfriend is going to give me that one for my birthday in a few months. Uh, but I also did pick up some oversized cassettes. This one here is Ravage. Uh, these ones are a lot more simpler than some of the other ones. They're almost double sized. Uh, they're just a fraction, a fraction smaller than some of the other ones. But the plastic feels really does cheap. But it hasn't got no screws or nothing. These are all held together by a little like you just push them together, like peg and port and whatever. And they work really well, in my opinion. Don't come in no weapons or nothing, which is a shame. But they're actually pretty damn cool. Um, I actually got the set because it did come with. Um, an oversized overkill. Uh, this is a green one. It did have lots of different colours. Uh, unfortunately, this one was missing an arm, which I was really gutted about, because it's a problem. apart from the purple one it came with from overkill, this is the only other decent one, because the other reason was a pink one. Uh, I did put a Generation 2 logo on that, because I thought it was a pretty neonish colour, so I thought it would suit overkill, really. A bit of a strange one. But there we go. Um, anyway, let me transform that back. It's a bit ridiculous. Right, so there was the cassettes. And what else did I get? I got uh, from chimungmung.com. I could have got these off eBay. This is um, the knockoff Generations Breakdown. And if I'm honest, it's actually... Well, this figure anyway. This is actually really good. Um... I only had one slight issue when I was transforming it from car mode, uh, trying to get the the roof section out of this bloody bits here because it's held by two panels that just slot into these little holes just there. Trying to get them out was a fucking pain in the ass. I had the same um, trouble with the knockoff punch counter punch anyway. So if you fill around, it took me a while, maybe 20 minutes trying to eke it out because obviously I didn't want to break the bloody toy. But other than that, um, all the joints are tight. Brilliant, um, and it looks great. I, ha I I did put my own Decepticon sign on the front there, mainly because it does come with one, but it just on the KOs for some reason the paint application never that clear. They always look a little bit misty or fuzzy or whatever. So I just put my own one on it. Looks really good, but a thumbs up for that one. Um, I was going to get it off eBay, but I missed it when it was cheap. Still, never mind. 
And the other one I had to get off chim, chimungmung.com was this. This is um, a knockoff Predator King. Well, this is like a mini Predator King. This one comes with a giant sword and everything. Um, and I put a few water, I bought logos on this. This is going to become a Shad Glass or something, Predator King. Um, I actually really do like it. They've redone a lot of lot of joints for this one. Whereas the other mini Predator King, um, it's copied a lot of elements from that, but it's also given some of some of them like uh, Rampage here, his arms are on ball joints now, and there's a few other bits that do the same. Um, he's does got the same, same basic transformation to Predator King, um, and he's got some funny hands, uh, as you can see, more like claws. Um, but if you want my opinion, it's actually really, really good. I, I do like it, um, and it's very impressive. I, I might actually do a video for this one. Uh, I don't know yet. I'm not totally sure. I probably will, to be honest, at some point in the future. If someone out there would like to see it, then just let me know. Um, it's, it's actually really good. I, I do like it. It looks great on display and everything like that. And it does come with this big fuck off sword, uh, which is pretty good. Anyway, right. So that is what I've been buying lately. I am looking to get a few other bits that I've seen. Uh, someone did mention to me that they finally knocked off the fans project. Is it Shadow Scythe armor for was it Classics Hot Rod or where it is? Uh, and it's the black version, so you can put it with um, like Wild Rider. Was it the Hanky Wild Rider or whatever, or the Shattered Glass Hot Rodimus? Um, and I've got both knockoffs of those, so that'll go nicely with my knockoffs of those. It shows these days that they will knock off absolutely anything, regardless if it's made by Hasbro or anybody. So there we go. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the figures that actually I was actually doing this video about. This is uh, Chainclaw and Catilla. Oh, that's Chainclaw, this is Catilla. This is in their fully armoured mode, so as you can see, they're pretenders. We all know what a pretender is. This is where it hides the robot inside. And for the most part, we'll start here with Chainclaw. I never had any of the pretender beasts. I only had a few pretenders when I was a kid anyway. It was only the small, small ones. Uh, so I was quite pleased to get these when I, when I eventually did get these back in about the mid-90s or anything. Um, the outer shells always look brilliant. It's just a shame they never could never incorporate no articulation into them because these would have been absolutely brilliant. I mean, I love the Decepticon ones, and these ones look really good as well. Uh, these ones have a detachable gun. Let me just take that off. And you can, uh, it's got a detachable helmet. And then under the helmet, of course, he looks like a proper bear, of course. Um, it's like a grizzly bear, I think. Maybe someone out there can correct me on that. But it looks really, really good, if you want my opinion. I love this. love all the detail. It's got all the fur moulded into it. I think it's brilliant. Anyway, as usual, you crack it open. And then inside, you're going to be very disappointed <laughs> with the robot that you get inside. They, so they do all this for the outer shell. And then they do lose it a little bit with the robot inside. Oh, pardon me. Um... Unfortunately, Catilla and Chainclaw's inner robots are almost identical. Actually, I was going to get this guy a long time ago, Chainclaw. I think it was Chainclaw. Uh, when I bought my original Power Master Optimus Prime, because my brother was going to get it for me out of a club book. Um, he got me that one. I couldn't afford, because I had to pay money back, obviously, every week. Uh, but I didn't, didn't in the end get Chainclaw. Um, I really wanted it, though. Um... <sighs> Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that I didn't in the end, to be honest. I think I'd have been probably disappointed. To be honest, I was probably disappointed with Power Master Optimus Prime, actually. Because um, it's nowhere near as good as the Japanese version. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on a bit of there. Uh, let's carry on with Chainclaw. Let's just retransform this guy into his... I suppose it's a mechanoid, well, mechanised bear mode, I suppose. This is what you'd call it. Um, this is it in its mode. That's it, really. You can put the gun on top, just like you did with the Pretender shell. And that's how he'll look. It's... Okay, it's not got no real articulation. Only, only there and there and what have you on the other side, obviously. The head won't move, the jaws won't open. But there's a front look at him. And it, it's, it's okay. It's not brilliant. I will say that definitely. It's not brilliant. Uh, right, we're going to transform this guy. Right, so first of all, we take off the gun off the top there, and then we just open out this section here, we just move these legs out of the way, and just move these around. You can either have these up here, or down to the back, really. If you have them down to the back, it helps with when you want to stand him up, but if you put them there, it does make him look a hell of a lot better. Then we just flip down the robot 
well, the animal head into his chest section. Flip back these little claws, and then you've got to try and flip around it, his little hands. He's got these tiny, tiny little hands, just in there, if you can get them out. Luckily, you need fingernails to try and get them out. And there we have it, there is cat, uh, sorry, chain claw in robot mode. And again, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. You can put this gun, as you can see, he's got a little tab just there, which will fit on the hole on his arm. And then he's got a gun on his arm, kind of like Megatron in a way. And there we have it, that is chain claw. Um, I, like, I like this, it's got some guns there, maybe maybe repro labels could do a set to upgrade this guy, kind of like they did with um, Gunrunner and stuff. Uh, it's okay, he's got the usual articulation just there on his arm, that's it, and he's got knee joints, but they're stuck together, so you're not going to get much joy out of them. There's a little head skull, but it's not bad, it could have done with the eyes painting in and stuff like that, because as it is, he's just got a green face. Anyway, we're going to put Chain Claw. I'm always getting these names mixed up on these fellas. Anyway, so that's Chain Claw. We're going to put him over there. And then we come on to Catilla. And now Catilla. Oh, well, now, I'm going to put that on him. Probably won't stay there. There we go. Now, Catilla, as you can see, always reminds everybody of Battle Cat out of He Man and the Masters of the Universe. And with good reason, because it really is a dead ringer for Battle Cat. Uh, obviously, it's a saber toothed tiger, obviously, with some. Uh, armoured gear on top of there, he's got a tail, um, which ain't too bad, he's got a gun obviously, and then you can take the gun off, like that, my gun has a bit of yellowing unfortunately, or discoloration, anyway, so take the helmet off, put that over there, and then he's more in his cringer mode, uh, and it's pretty good, again, some great detail, and I love the uh, saber tooth head there, I think it's brilliant, um, and it's, again, he's got all the fur moulded in, it's brilliant, that's actually brilliant all the effort you could tell went into the outer shells on these bloody pretenders and minimal effort went into the robots which is a shame and then you crack it open I remember in the comics of course uh, Catilla, well in the UK comics, I think that's about the only place where he featured he was actually to start life as a Decepticon and then turned to the Autobots along with um, Carnivac and of course Carnivac um, eventually turned to the Autobots as well after his honour dictated that he could no longer be a Decepticon let me just straighten this guy out into his Sabretooth Tiger mode as you can see he's got virtually the same mode just looks a little different than Chain Claw although this guy does have a tail and again you can put this gun on though this time you have to put it on this way which looks a little bit strange like that and there is Catilla, I think his jaw does open, I can't remember, no it's screwed in so you're not going to get no movement on that um, it's alright, again it's almost exactly the same as Catilla over there, oh uh, sorry, chain claw uh, right, so we're going to transform it exactly the same transformation except that you just got to flip the little tail away um, just rotate these out and again you can leave, leave them down like that Flip that down, flip those back, and then you've got to use your fingernails. Lucky I've got fingernails. There we go. God, bloody hell. And then we've got Catilla there in robot mode. You can flip these out, I suppose. Like that, some sort of glue. And then again, uh, he's got a tiny little hole just in there where his gun will fit in. Um, it doesn't want to go in there too well. I don't, want, and I don't want to snap the bloody thing off. Right, I'm going to say something. This is him. Yeah, it should be. Uh, I would have preferred it if on this joint up here where they put the screw, uh, they would have made it a bit smaller and then you could have put that in like that because that would have looked a hell of a lot better if you want my opinion. But they didn't. So they, what can you do? Uh, so this is Catilla in robot mode. Again, the same articulation all the way around it, just his uh, shoulders there and his knees. And that's it, there we go, you've got his head sculpt there, which is slightly hidden behind the joint for the animal head. Again, could have done with the eyes being painted in or something. I don't know if it's going to zoom in on that too well. No, it doesn't want to know, does it? Oh, there we go, it's too bad. Uh, not a bad robot. This guy's about basic sized, really. But then when you add it to his pretender shell, uh, they do add up. Uh, Right, I think that's about all I've got to say about these guys. They're not too bad. They're not bad figures, I suppose. They're not worst. But it's just that they generally don't look great 
in row in, in if they'd made this mode as as good as the effort they'd probably put into all the um, artistic into that and give these a bit of articulation as well. These would have been brilliant figures. But what can you do? Uh, right, so this has been Graham, the Collector 75, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.